In this lecture, we talk about Noetherian modules. So an A module M is Noetherian if it satisfies any of the equivalent conditions. So if it satisfies any one of these three conditions because all three of these are equivalent to each other. So let us uh, see what these conditions are. So this is the big theorem which we want to prove. Let A be a ring and M be an A module then the following conditions are equivalent. So the first condition is every non-empty family of submodules of M contains a maximal element. So this is under the relation of inclusion. So if you just take a family of submodules of M, there will be some maximal element in that non-empty family of submodules. So B is every increasing sequence. So this is just like in rings. So say you have this increasing sequence, M1 is contained within M2, which is contained within M3 and so on. So you have this increasing sequence, which we write it as M sub N, N greater or equal to zero. So with the relation of inclusion, as you can see, the relation is inclusion. So of submodules of M, so all these MNs are submodules of our this module M, this becomes stationary. So that is, there is some N0 such that M of N will become equal to M of N0 after this index N greater or equal to N0. So this will keep increasing and then it will stabilize. Once it hits M N0, then everything after that will be the same. So this will be M of N0 plus one and so on. So it stabilizes. So again, precisely as we saw in Noetherian rings. And part C is every submodule of M is of finite type. So let us uh, start proving this. So first we will show is that A implies C. So we show that A implies C. So let E be a submodule of M. So say E is some submodule of M and phi be the collection consisting of submodules of finite type of E. So what we want to show is that we want to show that E is of finite type. So every submodule of M is of finite type. So we are fixing our submodule as E and we have to show now that E is of finite type. So E is a submodule of M phi be the collection consisting of submodules of finite type of E. Now phi is not empty precisely because zero is in phi. So now we can use part A that every non-empty family of submodules of M contains a maximal element. So there is a maximal element. So by A, phi contains a maximal element and we fix this maximal element as say F. Now you pick X and E, then F plus AX is a submodule of finite type of E. Now precisely because this X is in E and uh, this F plus AX, it is generated by union of this X, which is an E, and any finite set of generators for F. And F itself is the maximal element uh, because this phi, what we said, is the collection consisting of submodules of finite type of E. So we have this E and phi is just the collection. So F is just the maximal element, so F is contained within E. So this F plus AX will also be contained within E because X is also in E. So therefore, F plus AX is precisely F. Uh, precisely because F plus AX contains F for sure, because you're adding an extra element. And F is uh, maximal. So since it is maximal, it has to be the case that this is equal because F by our construction is the maximal element of all the submodules of E. So there is an equality here. So what we have shown now is that for every element X you pick in E, you will have an equality like this. So E is contained within F because for every element X you pick in E, you will have F plus AX equals to F. So this X would end up lying in F as we have shown here. So E will lie within F because every element of E lies within F. So therefore, E is equal to F and F by construction is a module of finite type because it's a maximal element and uh, phi is the collection consisting of all submodules of finite type of E and therefore, E is of finite type since F is of finite type. So now we are going to prove that C implies B. 
So let this mn n greater or equal to 0 be an increasing sequence of submodules of m. So then you set this E as union of all these increasing sequence of submodules of uh, m. So E is again a submodule of m. Now we are assuming C. So E is a finite type. So therefore it contains a finite set of generators say x1 to xq. So because we are assuming C submodule is a finite type. So this E will have a finite set of generators. And now uh, the story proceeds exactly in the same way as in uh, Noetherian rings. So for every index i, there is another index n of i such that this x of i will lie within some m n sub i. Because all these generators have to lie in some m of n here and these are forming an increasing sequence. So say x1 lies in here and then x2 will lie somewhere x3 they have to lie in some mn and all of them are increasing so then let n0 be the largest of these ni's so say there is this mn0 sits right here which will end up containing all these generators so then xi lies in mn0 for all i so all the generators will lie within this because it sits right here at the top and so E will be contained within MN0 because all the generators of E are within MN0. So E has to be equal to MN0 because E is actually the union of all of these. There are things lying over the top of this, so there has to be an equality after this. So for N greater or equal to N0, the inclusion relations, so MN0 will be contained within MN, will be contained within E. Because this is an increasing chain, so this will lie within some other mn and so on but now this is equal to e because this contains all the generators and e is the just the union so it has to be the case that mn0 is equal to e so therefore you have mn0 is equal to mn so after this point the chain becomes stationary so after the point when this mn0 contains all the generators this chain has to become stationary so nothing much so the sequence becomes stationary beyond n naught so we have uh, proved that c implies b now we have to prove that uh, this b implies a and initially we proved that a implies c so the equivalence of a and b is a special case of this uh, new lemma which we'll talk about concerning uh, partially ordered sets so the lemma is let t be a set that is a partially ordered set then the following two statements are equivalent so a implies b and b implies a so every non-empty subset of t contains a maximal element if and only if every increasing sequence tn n greater or equal to 0 of elements of t is stationary so if if you take a non-empty subset of t this contains a maximal element is equivalent to you can construct a sequence which will eventually become stationary so here we will require axiom of choice so a implies b is obvious so once you have a maximal element of a non empty subset then you know the sequence will become stationary at the maximal element so if you have an increasing sequence it will just become stationary at the maximal element so let t of q be a maximal element of the increasing sequence uh, tn then obviously after this index q uh, tn greater or equal to tq so this is increasing sequence so tn is greater or equal to tq but uh, tn has to be equal to tq because tq is precisely the maximal element so this was obvious now we do b implies a so this is essentially contrapositive so b implies a so we are going to say not A would imply not B. And uh, this is it. This is what we are going to prove. But, you know, for contradiction, you can always, we always just end up saying that, you know, we have not A with B applying not B, which contradicts B. So you cannot have B and not B. So our assumption for not A to start with was wrong. So that is how proof by contradiction works. So first we will show this and then we will just uh, jump to contradiction but the proof could end just right here. 
So start with uh, not A. So suppose there exists a subset S of T which does not contain a maximal element. So here we are saying every non-empty subset of T contains a maximal element. So this is A. So we have not A. So it does not contain a maximal element. So then for any X in S, the set of elements of S which are larger than X is non-empty. So obviously because it does not contain a maximal element. So you uh, take all the elements which are larger than X will always be non-empty because it can only be empty in if there is a maximal element. So then there is nothing bigger than that element, but there is no maximal element here. So now we use axiom of choice. So by axiom of choice now, one can choose some T0 in S and inductively define a sequence Tn n greater or equal to 0 by setting some Tn plus 1 is equal to f of Tn which essentially says that uh, the sequence is increasing. So this is like an increasing sequence. So we will have Tn plus 1 greater or equal to Tn because every time you can just uh, keep on choosing elements which are bigger and bigger because uh, yeah, so that is that is it. So for any X in S, the set of elements which are larger than X is non-empty. So you can keep choosing bigger and bigger elements to construct a increasing sequence. So this increasing sequence is strictly increasing and therefore it is not stationary. So it never becomes stationary. So it is just keeps on increasing. So you have not P. Increasing sequence of elements of T is stationary. So that is not stationary. It just keeps on increasing. So you have not A implies not P. And obviously now we just cast it in proof by contradiction. So this contradicts B because this is not P. So B implies A is established.